No more fake numbers. We have the real numbers for AEW Collision, and now it is time for the quarter by quarter. Our ratings. Welcome back, guys, to the channel. There was some confusion over the weekend. The number 122K was trending everywhere. It was rumoured that's how much AEW Collision drew. Now, we did upload a video about this, but I was reluctant to believe it. I thought that number was way too low, and I was correct. It turns out that it was a pretty low number, but a lot higher than 122K. In fact, AEW Collision actually did more than three times that. It did 378,000 views. Still one of their lower collisions of the year, but it's a lot better than 122k. And honestly, if Tony Khan did do 122k, then he'd have probably had to have spent that amount on Colt to cheer himself up, because that's a very, very low number. But uh, yeah, it's time for the quarter by quarter our rating so we're just going to get stuck straight into it quarter one collision kicked off eight o'clock to eight fifteen with the ftr live promo uh jack perry backstage and then a recap and then roderick strong versus leo rush and this got three hundred and ninety six thousand viewers. so not a great start not a horrible start just just there really, just marginally off the 400k. We move in to quarter two, 8.15 to 8.30, and there was absolutely no change. It did not go up a percent, it did not go down a percent, it had 396,000 fewer. So, no change whatsoever. Quarter two had the continuation of Strong versus Rush. We had Kyle O'Reilly backstage, we had Tony Khan, Christopher Daniels, and Roderick Strong backstage, Roderick Strong demands a title, and Tony Khan just looks there like bug-eyed, wide-eyed, can't believe it, snorts a line, and then agrees to give him his title shot. So no change here. Quarter three, Daniel Garcia and Shabata taking on the Workhorse Men, and then a Stokely Havaway and a Chris Statlander backstage promo. This lost 10%, not surprising, down to 357,000 viewers, and in the demo, it lost 13%. So quarter three, big loss here. Daniel Garcia and Shibata, nobody cares about these two. And then you've got the jobber workhorse men. Hardly surprising that this segment was the one that lost the viewers. Come on, let's just be honest here. Quarter four, 8.45 to 9pm. It was Rina Dorada taking on Thunder Rosa. We had Danny Rose, KM and Ricky G versus Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony. And then we had a Tony Storm and Mariah May backstage promo. Surprise, this actually went up, but it did. Plus 3%. I mean, you've got Danny Rose, KM and Ricky G. Who the hell are these guys? It's jobbers jobbing to jobbers at this point. Although you do have a nice Tony Storm promo in there. And Thunder Rosa, I mean... She's all right, so whatever. Uh, quarter five, nine o'clock to nine fifteen. It was Claudio Cascanoli versus Johnny TV, and this got four hundred and sixteen thousand views. It went up thirteen percent, and it was the highest rated quarter of the show. It went up twelve percent in the demo, and it was the only quarter to do above four hundred thousand. So interesting, the only quarter to get over four hundred thousand on Collision was this one here why did it do that well you've got a former wwe guy in there johnny tv two former wwe guys to be exact plus claudio cascanoli he is in the blackpool combat club they do tend to do okay and although to be fair it is mainly brian but who knows maybe people thought they were going to get brian or maybe people just thought it was a decent match it does help that it was in quarter five as well. You're at the, the nine o'clock hour. So, I mean, it could just be a bit of a coincidence here. But I thought this was the best match of the night for me. Uh, Claudio versus Johnny TV. You know, two established guys. Two guys with a bit of name value. Two guys that the average audience knows. You compare these two to maybe like Daniel Garcia and Shibata. I mean, at least these two guys have they've had WWE exposure. You know, these two guys have had decent careers in WWE the rest of the people on this card fucking suck. You know, the rest of the people, nobody knows. Anyway, moving into quarter six, 9.15 to 9.30, it was West Coast Wrecking Crew versus Shane Taylor Promotions. It lost 11%, down to 369,000 views, and in the demo, it lost 13%. Am I surprised? Absolutely not. Who are the West Coast Wrecking Crew? I have no idea. Shane Taylor Promotions... 
absolutely suck. So yeah, this quarter went down, hardly surprising. Quarter 7, 9.30-9.45, Will Osprey versus Kyle O'Reilly. Will Osprey, massive draw, paid that big money for him, it lost 8%. It went down to 340,000 viewers, and in the demo, it lost 11%. So... This ain't good. Will Osprey defending his international or inter, whatever they call it, the international belt, and it's losing, you know, this amount of fuse. It's losing a lot in the demo. This guy's getting paid big money. He was one of the, the trio of signings. Remember, Tony Khan made those three signings during the short period of time. Osprey, Mercedes Monet, and Okada. And look at this. I mean, I, he should be making a difference. He's defending his title here. And it's the, the numbers have tanked. And then we move into quarter eight, 9.45 to 10 p.m. It was a continuation of that match. And then we got a post-match with Swerve Strickland, who confronted Will Osprey after the match. This did go up 12%. And to, it finished with 380,000. It went up 6% in the demo. People may be happy to see Swerve Strickland. Probably people just tuning in at the end to see if anything exciting happened. But it sucks for AEW that... People didn't want to watch Will Ospreay versus Kyle O'Reilly. They only wanted to see what happened at the end. So if Will Ospreay was such a good draw, if he was this great guy, then we would see people just be, they'd be glued. They'd be staying tuned for the last two quarters. The last half an hour would be doing good numbers because people would want to see Will Ospreay in his full. And that hasn't happened here. So it looks like people just tuned out and then came back in at the end to see how AEW Collision went off the air. Anyway, guys, that is your quarter by quarter breakdown ratings. I mean, uh, I mean, the only thing I will say is it's, it's pretty consistent. You've got your highest quarter, four hundred sixteen thousand. Your lowest quarter was three hundred forty. Not a lot of switch in there. Yes, uh, some segments, some quarters did lose a bit, but th there's nothing massive there. So. From start to finish, it was it was consistent enough. We normally credit SmackDown for being consistent. So, I mean, let's keep it consistent. Keyword here. And uh, praise Collision for their consistency. So, is what it is, guys. Catch in the next one. Not a great number, but who knows? Can they improve next week? Probably. It's a low number. It's always easy to improve on a, a low number or easier. So, we'll see what happens next week. Till next time. Peace.